Moles, Molar Mass, and Avogadro's Number, Part 1. Okay, so now we're going to talk about something called the mole concept. And basically, this is a practical problem concerning atom size. Okay, and so it's going to lead us to this mole concept. Now remember, atomic mass units, so we talked about those just a little while ago. And one AMU, or one atomic mass unit, is equal to 1.6605 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Now, of course, you don't need to memorize that. Notice how small an amount of mass that is. And we know that the average mass of a water molecule is 18.02 AMU, okay? And that would be only 2.992 times 10 to the 20, negative 26 kilograms, which would also be very, very hard to measure. Now, we can't really just count them either because they're too small. And even if we could, we would need a whole ton of them to be able to weigh them on a balance. We would just need lots and lots of them. So we definitely have a problem. So how can we solve this? Well. Take a look at the ratio of atomic masses for one atom of oxygen and one atom of hydrogen. Of course, these are the average atomic masses. So 15.999 AMU for oxygen, 1.008 AMU for hydrogen, and if you take that ratio, you get 15.872. And let's say we take 100 of each now, and we divide it the same way, and we find out that it's the same ratio, 15.872. And so let's keep on using larger and larger numbers, and we're still going to get the re same result. So let's go ahead and add enough atoms on that balance to be able to get 15.999 grams of oxygen and 1.008 grams of hydrogen. And those are going to match the average atomic masses shown on the periodic table except now they'll be in grams, all right? So if we take 15.999 grams for oxygen, 1.008 grams for hydrogen, then we're still going to get the same ratio. Now, the number of atoms that it takes to have those masses is a very, very special number, okay? And that number is Avogadro's number. And so the bottom line is it takes 6.022 times 10 to the 23 oxygen atoms to have a mass of 15.999 grams, and it takes 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of hydrogen to have a mass of 1.008 grams. Now take a look at phosphorus here, okay? Now how many phosphorus atoms would it take to have a mass of 30.973 grams, as it shows on the periodic table? You're right, Avogadro's number. It's going to take 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of them. Okay, so this leads us to the mole concept, which is basically just a chemist counting unit. Okay, and here's our obligatory picture of a mole that we always have to have. All right, and so a mole of atoms is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 of them. Okay, and a mole is basically a counting unit that's directly analogous to a dozen. So we would say, okay, I have a dozen donuts, or I have a dozen pencils, or a dozen eyeballs, or whatever, and we know that that means 12, okay? So now, whenever we say a mole of anything, a mole of pencils, a mole of ping pong balls, a mole of, let's see, what else do we want to have? A mole of flowers, a mole of seeds, or a mole of atoms, or a mole of molecules, it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23 of them. 23rd, okay? So, in other words, it's a whole lot of them. But whenever we say we have a mole of something, we're always saying we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, so here's a few other ways you'll see this number expressed, okay? So, here, here's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and then you see this mole inverse. That just means per mole. So particles is implied, so particles per mole, okay? Now particles can be anything. They can be atoms, electrons, cations, anions. They can be anything, okay? Now you'll also see it abbreviated as N sub A, and again, it's just 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles per mole. You also might see N sub zero, and it just means the same thing, okay? 
So Avogadro's number is just the number of particles in a mole, just like 12 is the number of things in a dozen. Exactly the same idea. Okay, so now let's talk about something called the molar mass. Okay, because this is something we can actually use in the lab. This is a way to get a certain number of atoms of some compound or some element or whatever we want to do in the lab. It's a way to get a certain amount of it. Okay, now the molar mass is just the amount of mass in grams in one mole of particles. Okay, so remember a mole of atoms is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of them. Okay, and one mole of any element has a molar mass in grams that is equal to this average atomic mass that's shown on the periodic table. So that goes for everything. Okay, all of those elements on the periodic table. If you have Avogadro's number of them, then they are going to have the mass shown on the periodic table in grams. Okay, so now we know we can interpret that in grams, and that actually does make our life a lot easier because we can measure grams. All right, so one mole of tungsten, if we were to weigh out one mole, then we would weigh out 183.84 grams. And if we put that on the balance, then we could be confident that we had 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd tungsten atoms. Okay? And so when we put 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd tungsten atoms on the scale, on the balance, we're going to get 183.84 grams. Okay, so now what about compounds? Well, compounds can have a molar mass also. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to add those molar masses for all the elements in the compound, but we're going to multiply for each element, we're going to multiply the mass by the number of moles of that element in the compound before adding them up. Okay, so we'll see how to do this right now. All right, so let's calculate the molar mass of propane. So see, here's our formula for propane. Okay, we can see we have three carbons, eight hydrogens. Okay. If we have a whole mole of this stuff, then we would say we have three moles of carbon in here and eight moles of hydrogen, okay? So our molar mass is gonna be three times the average mass of carbon and then eight times the average mass of hydrogen, okay? So let's go ahead and do that and see what we get. Okay, so we'll plug in, all right? So three times 12.011, and then we're going to add on 8 times 1.008, and we're going to get 44.097 grams. Okay? All right, so let's do the same thing for phosgene. Okay? So that's one carbon atom, one oxygen, and two chlorines if we're looking at just the molecule. If we want to have a whole mole of this stuff, it's going to be a mole of carbon, a mole of oxygen, and two moles of chlor chlorine. Okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Why don't you take a second and try it? and then um, we'll go through the answer. Okay, so we're gonna add up the molar mass of each element. We're gonna multiply it by the number of moles of that element in the compound, okay? So we have one mole of carbon, all right? One mole of oxygen and two of chlorine. We add all that together, we're gonna get 98.916 grams, and that's what you should get. Okay, so now let's do another little process here, okay? Let's convert from mass to moles. This is something that we're going to do a lot of in this course, and so might as well get started on the right track, all right? So we can use this molar mass that we just learned how to calculate to convert from grams, which we can measure, to moles of that substance, okay? So let's suppose we want 35 and a half grams of potassium chloride for a reaction. All right, so how many moles is that? And how can we figure that out? Okay, well, a good place to start when you have to go from grams to moles, a good place to start is by calculating this molar mass. Okay, and so let's go over here and we see potassium 39.098 just have one in that formula unit, okay? And then we're gonna add up one chlorine, okay? So go up here and get chlorine, and we're gonna get 74.551 grams. Okay, so now, now that we have the molar mass, 
Now let's use the molar mass as a conversion factor, okay? And you can put it either way, but one mole of potassium chloride is composed of 74.551 grams of it, or 74.551 grams of potassium chloride is one mole of potassium chloride. Okay, so let's use the conversion factor, okay? So now, in order to convert, finish up our conversion, we're going to take this 35.5 grams of potassium chloride that we started off with, and then we're going to put a conversion factor here. We're going to write one. Now notice, we're starting in grams of potassium chloride, and we want to go to moles. So whatever we want to get rid of, we're going to put on the bottom, okay? So we're going to divide this out, okay? And we're going to get 0 0.476 moles of potassium chloride. All right, so now what if we wanted to go from moles of a substance to number of molecules, okay? Now we're going to use Avogadro's number for that conversion, okay? So for example, let's convert 0.267 moles of sulfur trioxide, which is SO3, to the number of molecules of it. And so remember, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23 particles or molecules in one mole of any substance, okay? So written specifically for sulfur trioxide, we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in one mole, okay? So let's go ahead and use a conversion factor to convert from moles to, uh, uh, to molecules, okay? So we're going to write our 0.267 moles of sulfur trioxide, okay? We're going to write a conversion factor. There's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd sulfur trioxide molecules in one mole of sulfur trioxide, okay? Now notice I have the mole on the bottom rather than having this guy switched. I have the mole on the bottom because I want that to cancel out. And so I'm going to multiply 0.267 times this number okay, which is Avogadro's number, and that's going to give me some number less than Avogadro's number. See how I don't have a whole mole here? That's only a little over a quarter of a mole. So if I multiply that decimal or that fraction by Avogadro's number, then I'm going to get a smaller number, and that does make sense, okay, So because I didn't start with a whole mole, so I shouldn't have as many as is in Avogadro's number. So I end up instead with 1.61 times 10 to the 23rd sulfur trioxide molecules. Okay, so now you try one. So how many atoms are there in 0.23 moles of nitrogen atoms? So how many atoms are in this 0.23 moles of nitrogen atoms? Okay, so we have our 0.23 moles, all right, and we're going to use Avogadro's number as a conversion factor. So one mole of nitrogen has 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd nitrogen atoms. That should say atoms, all right? And when we multiply that out, we're going to get this number again that's smaller than Avogadro's number because we only had a part of a mole. We had 0.23 mole instead of a whole mole. And so we're going to end up with less than a whole Avogadro's number worth of nitrogen atoms. Now, one thing, did you notice that we didn't need the molar mass for nitrogen, okay? Now, you never need the molar mass for going from moles to number of molecules, all right? All you need is Avogadro's number. That's our bridge between moles and numbers of molecules. Okay, so here's another example, all right? Now, we're going to go from moles of sulfur trioxide to molecules of sulfur trioxide, and we want to figure out how many oxygen atoms are in this number of moles of sulfur trioxide. So that's a little bit harder problem. It has a little bit of a twist, okay? So here, so let's go ahead and do the same thing we've been doing. So we have 0.82 moles of sulfur trioxide, okay? And we're going to convert to number of molecules. Now look, we have, that's a lot closer to a whole mole, but it's still not a whole mole, all right? And the number that we end up with, the number of sulfur trioxide molecules, is indeed less than this one, okay? Avogadro's number, and that's, that seems right. So we have 4.94 times 10 to the 23rd sulfur trioxide molecules. Now, are we done? If we want the number of oxygen atoms, what do we need to do? Well, it looks to me like there are three oxygen atoms for every molecule of sulfur trioxide, okay? 
So let's go ahead and use that information to figure out how many oxygen atoms are in that sample. Okay, and so basically all we're going to do is multiply the number of oxygen atoms per molecule by the number of sulfur trioxide molecules. Now I've done it kind of officially here, all right? So here's our number of sulfur trioxide molecules and one molecule of sulfur trioxide, so that gets rid of our sulfur trioxide molecules, gives us three oxygen atoms, okay? So if we multiply the number of sulfur trioxide molecules by the number of oxygen atoms per molecule, then we're going to end up with 1.5 times 10 to the 24 oxygen atoms. Now, I have a little note here, remember sig figs. So 1.5, let's go up here, we have two sig figs here, two sig figs here, okay? So that's where that rounding came from. Okay, so now one last step. So how many moles of oxygen atoms is this, okay? So we just calculated how many oxygen atoms there are in 0.82 moles of sulfur trioxide. So now let's go ahead and take the number of oxygen atoms that we ended up with and let's convert it back to moles of oxygen atoms, okay? So again, we're going to use Avogadro's number as a conversion factor. So, the, so one mole of oxygen atoms contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd oxygen atoms. That should be a 3, okay? So 1.5 times 10 to the 24th, okay? And then we're going to divide that by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and we're going to end up with 2.49 moles of oxygen atoms. Now, again, we only need two sig figs, so that's why we're rounding to 2.5 moles of oxygen atoms.